continue to use the slavery issue forever. The Africans themselves were the first ones who initiated slavery. The white Europeans couldn't have got slaves unless the blacks were complicitous in this effort. What's going on, family? Welcome back to the From the Bottom FS Reaction Channel, man. Today, uh, this comes from one of my subscribers that told me to check out some Walter E. Williams. Um, of course, the topic of today is how much can we blame on slavery? All right. So in this one, he's kind of, he's kind of going back and forth with Ronald Walters. Um, my first time, actually, this is my introduction to both of them. So uh, this should be a good one, man. Should be a good one. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this video. Come on. How much political progress have blacks made in America since the death of Dr. Martin Luther King? Well, in terms of elective offices, there's been significant uh, political power, I mean, uh, political progress. But uh, very often, more often than not, that uh, political power has not been translated into the things that blacks need, like better schools, uh, uh, more safer communities. You know, some of the cities uh, in our country whose mayors and city councilmen are predominantly black they're some of our cities with the major problems. Now, I personally don't think that political power uh, in and of itself is a solution to the problems. Professor Ronald Walters, same question. How much progress? Well, I think we've made a lot of progress. Um, the Voting Rights Act of 1965 was sort of a first stage. And with that, um, we started out uh, 1,000 black elected officials. We now have about 6,651. Uh, so we've got a, a large number of black elected officials. Uh, mayors of many large cities and so forth. I think the challenge now is to uh, try to leverage political power and economic power. And I think uh, to that extent I would agree with uh, Mr. Williams. That we, that's our next frontier. Mm. Professor, we're, I remember being told in school the way you get something done is to get people elected and then you get the voting power and then you accomplish these things. Why hasn't that happened? <clears throat> well, uh, I don't buy that hypothesis. <clears throat> that is, uh, if you look at uh, Japanese Americans who almost by any socioeconomic measure of socioeconomic success, they stand at the top of the pile in America. Uh, Japanese, uh, they don't even have political power in areas where they're the most numerous, such as San Francisco. Um, or you find Jews in American, America. Uh, uh, Jews, uh, before they established themselves as political contenders, strong political contend contenders, they had a lot of economic power. Now, on the other hand, if you look at some of the white ethnics, namely the Irish, the Irish uh, established themselves politically uh, in many of our cities. They ran the machines, but the Irish were the slowest rising among the ethnic groups. So I don't buy the proposition that in order to get economic power, <coughs> a first order condition is to get uh, political power. Uh, it may be the reverse. Mm. So just starting out, they both have similar views on the topic, but what's standing out to me the most is I was born two months after this was recorded which kind of tells me even back then we're still talking about the same issues, man, even to this day and how we haven't come to solve or agree on the status of, you know, black people in America, man. So this is so far so good, man. Let's keep it going. So let's talk about economic progress. Professor. <clears throat> well, I think the uh, economic progress of blacks has been uh, phenomenal. I, I would say progress in general among blacks. Uh, I think blacks are the only oppressed people in history that have accomplished uh, so much over some of the highest battle uh, barriers in such a short period of time. Uh, mm -hmm. That is, uh, <clears throat> uh, if you could resurrect uh, uh, ex-slaves, I mean slaves, <clears throat> they would find that the grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren and granddaughters are mayors of the world's largest cities. If you considered, uh, if you looked at black income each year and you added it up and just considered black people as a nation, Black people would be the ninth richest nation on the face of this earth, er, on the face of this earth. Mm. which is not saying that there are many, That's many crazy. problems that remain, but black people have made phenomenal progress. So that brings up a bigger issue, man. To me, that means we're out here, we're out here making the money, but what are we spending our money on? That might be a, another underlying issue right here. So that was a good bar, man. Let's keep it black going. Black people would be the ninth richest nation on the face of this earth. That's on crazy. the face of this earth. Which is not saying that there are many, many problems that remain, but black people have made phenomenal progress. No question. Economic. Yes, no question about it. Uh, when you look at, for example, even the harshest period uh, of our subjugation in this country, the turn of the century, it was also the fastest period of black capital formation. 
Uh, so from a people who uh, W.E.B. Du Bois said a long time ago came into uh, their citizenship naked and penniless, uh, what we have today is the people who um, have pretty much by their own, the dent of their own sweat, uh, have achieved a tremendous um, status in this country. Slavery and discrimination in America, that is history. Uh, nothing can be done about it. And I believe in that sense he's right that we need not focus all of our energies on it. Mm. Moreover, uh, I would argue that the discrimination, the problems that black people face uh, today, uh, for the most part have very, very little to do with the heritage of slavery, with the heritage of uh, uh, discrimination in our country. Here we go. Uh, you know, in 1925 in Harlem, 85% uh, of black kids live in two-parent families. Today in Harlem, maybe you'll find 30% if you're lucky. Mm. Uh, now, And that right there, that stat has a lot to do with the welfare system, man, the government assistance, man. You know, uh, when, you know, when you tell the mother of the household, hey, you don't necessarily need a man in the household to raise your kids, that that's probably the most impactful thing that destroyed the black family, you know, back in the 80s and in the, in the, in the 90s, coming in and uh, separating the man from the household, man, making, making it seem like to the woman that he's not as important and you don't need him as much. And we're still dealing with that kind of mindset to this day with the modern woman that we have, you know, in our society, man. So, man, this is, this is. Family, today in Harlem, maybe you'll find 30% if crazy. you're lucky. Uh, now, this great change can't be attributed to slavery. It can't be attributed to racial discrimination. Right. Uh, and that is, I, I think that too much of our focus is on discrimination and the heritage of slavery, as opposed to how are we going to cope with the immediate problems that we face in our communities today. From San Diego, California, mm. go right ahead. Um, I'd like to say something that, you know, I'm a white person and I've about had it up to my earlobes with the slavery issue. I mean, my great great granddad wasn't around when slavery was going on. I believe if in order for people to get together and organize themselves as a functioning unit, why don't they quit talking about the slavery? I mean, that goes back to Abraham Lincoln. We're almost beyond Ronald Reagan. We're entering the year 2000. Are they going to continue to use the slavery issue forever? The Africans themselves were the first ones who initiated slavery. The white Europeans couldn't have got slaves unless the blacks were complicitous in this effort. I think it's just an atrocity to keep using the slavery thing. And I've seen the blacks from Martin Luther King up until today go downhill. I mean, if they don't think they've gone downhill, look what's going on in L.A. with the gang shootings. And the one gentleman said, if they want to make education better for blacks, we'll give them to better neighborhoods. Well, they're living in black neighborhoods. Why don't they straighten up the blacks in the neighborhoods? Do they want to move to a white neighborhood where it's safe, or do they want to move to a better black neighborhood? Also, why doesn't Bill Cosby, Michael Jackson, Flip Wilson, Mr. T, all these super black studs and all the money go into the neighborhoods and donate a lot of money to help their black brothers. They don't because they want to be an oil cookie and they want to get white. Thank you, Carl. Let me, let me just jump in here, the Professor. <laughs> well, uh, outside of the, Hold on, the uh, volume. Of so he started off correct, and then I think he got emotional with his anger there. He got emotional with his anger there, and I mean... I think, I mean, it kind of came out there, you guys, towards the middle, towards the end, man. Like, um, he doesn't view, um, based off what he's saying, man, he doesn't, he doesn't think, he doesn't view black people highly. You know what I mean? Um, and the slave comment there, yeah, there were, in Africa, there, there, there were, like, you know, folks that sold their own black people to slavery. But there's also, at the same time, whites came in and stole and ravaged. And, you know, and, and, you know, drew in and I would say kidnapped, but enslaved blacks as well. But wow, man. Hold on, y'all. I'm going to have to run that. That was crazy. Let's know what he's talking about here. Together and organize himself as a functioning unit. Why don't they quit talking about the slavery? I mean, that goes back to Abraham Lincoln. We're almost beyond Ronald Reagan. We're entering the year 2000. Are they going to continue to use the slavery issue forever? The Africans themselves were the first ones who initiated slavery. The white Europeans couldn't have got slaves unless the blacks were complicitous in this effort. 
I think it's just an atrocity to keep using this slavery thing. And I've seen the blacks from Martin Luther King That's up to today left. go downhill. I mean, if they don't think they've gone downhill, look what's going on in <clears> L.A. <throat> with the gang shootings. And the one gentleman said if they want to... He made this stretch from Martin Luther King going downhill to gang shootings. If you know anything about Martin Luther King, he's definitely about he's definitely not about gang shootings, gang violence, anything gang related. Everything he stood on was peaceful, peaceful protest, even when they're getting sprayed down by water hoses, even though even when they're getting bricks thrown at their faces, even though they're really physically getting beaten and uh you know, having dogs sicked on them in the, in the streets publicly, they he still preached peaceful. He still said no nonviolence, we can't retaliate. I think it wasn't until Malcolm X came around, he was more so like, nah, I'm not going to let you throw a brick at me. I'm not going to just let you sit on a dog on me. I ain't going to just sit back and let that happen because, you know, and that's always been a huge debate, man. Who had the who had the better, more efficient way of, you know, protest? Um, and uh, people really disregard Malcolm X. Uh, he was more aggressive. He was more, he kind of stood up for himself. He kind of was more outspoken versus Martin Luther King. Um, he was more, you know, if we stand on the right principles and if we stand on the right side of history, it will always benefit us in the long run. <clears throat> and I think he more, he more so understood the long term um, accomplishments of his, of his race and, and uh, as human beings, if we just show, you know, I guess gracefulness, you know, amongst war within a, while you're in a war. Um, but I don't know, man, throughout history, I think, I think, I think, uh, Martin Luther King was always held in a higher regard than Malcolm X, but even to this day, you can kind of debate which one you favor, but, um, we can all agree that this is the society that they were both living in created both of them, you know, created both sides of that. Um, so it's easy for us to stand back and look look at it through a tube, through a through you know through a, a TV station, but they were both living through that kind of stuff. So I understand both sides of that, but this caller right here kind of went way left. King up until today goes downhill. I mean, if they don't think they've gone downhill, look what's going on in L.A. with the gang shootings. And the one gentleman said, if they want to make education better for blacks, we'll get to better neighborhoods. Well, they're living in black neighborhoods. Why don't they straighten up the blacks in the neighborhoods? Do they want to move to a white neighborhood where it's safe, or do they want to move to a better black neighborhood? Also, why doesn't Bill Cosby, Michael Jackson, Flip Wilson, Mr. T, all these super black studs with all the money, go into the neighborhoods super and black donate studs. a lot of money to help their black brothers? They don't because they want to be an oil cookie and they want to get white. Thank you, Carl. Let me let me just jump in here, <laughs> Professor. Well, now, I'm not too sure on the receipts on those folks who who he, he was naming off there, but I know Michael Jackson was a huge um, celebrity that definitely gave back uh, thousands, if not millions, to um, his own to you know to better the living situations for a lot of people. Uh, I'm not sure about the other ones there. I may have to take some receipts on that one. You guys, let me know if you guys know. But man, that car that car went way left, man. Way left. And they want to get white. Thank they you, Carl. Let me let me just jump in here, <laughs> Professor. Well, uh, outside of the uh, volume of racism uh, in those remarks, uh, I think that uh, I understand. I think uh, the frustration yeah. of people uh, who've heard a lot about slavery and uh, who feel, I think, uh, the tremendous guilt associated with it. Uh, it is a particular American crime, uh, and I think we have yet to deal with it as a people. Um, the Holocaust, of course, was something which was also an historical crime. It was mm -hmm. something that somebody else did over there. Slavery was something that somebody did right here. Mm -hmm. And so it is an abiding part of the American scene. Mm -hmm. Like it or not, uh, the condition of black people in America can be traced back to many of those things that were done. And so it's logical for us to raise it. Uh, we should not use it as, a, as an excuse all the time. Mm -hmm. And so I think to that extent, what we're talking about is history, and we're trying to make some sense out of the condition that black people face today. Let me respond also. Sure. So right there, I wish he would have used, I guess, more examples of that straight line from slavery to where, where we're at today. I know a few myself. Um, for one example, is like the food we used to eat, the chitlins, the pork, the fat back, all this uh, super unhealthy. The, the worst parts of the pig was given to the slaves. And even to this day, we still eat this stuff. I, I don't, 
You know what I'm saying? But we still eat this stuff. You know what I mean? And that leads to health issues with your diabetes, which your I mean, it causes tons of death. Um, there's a lot of complications there. Um, and that all came directly from how we used to eat while we were, while we were slaves. But I wish from my, from a, from a viewer's perspective, he would use more like examples, like draw that straight line and make it, make it, make it clear. You know what I mean? Let's keep it going we're talking about is history and we're trying to make some sense out of the condition that black people face today. Let me respond also sure. to the caller's call. That is, <clears throat> uh, slavery and discrimination in America, that is history. Uh, nothing can be done about it. And I believe in that Thanks. sense he's right that we need not focus all of our energies on it. Thanks. Moreover, uh, I would argue that the discrimination, the problems that black people face uh, today, uh, for the most part, have very, very little to do with the heritage of slavery, with the heritage of uh, uh, discrimination in our country. Uh, you know, in 1925 in Harlem, 85% uh, of black kids live in two-parent families. Today in Harlem, maybe you'll find 30% if you're lucky. Uh, now, this great change can't be attributed to slavery. It can't be attributed to racial discrimination. Uh, and that is, I, I think that too much of our focus is on discrimination and the heritage of slavery as mm -hmm. opposed to how are we going to cope with the immediate problems that we face in our communities today. Well, that, mm. that is an incredible remark uh, because if uh, at one time in the history of this country uh, blacks had ever been equal and then gone downhill, I think we could make the argument that slavery would have had nothing to do with it. But what we have faced historically is a situation where we have never had the resources to catch up because of slavery. We have never had um, an equal status in any measure that you can mm -hmm. formulate uh, because of that condition, because we started late and we were kept back late. No, so but I'm I don't saying, understand, I really don't understand mm -hmm. how an, an academic can sit here and say but no, that what slavery I had saying. nothing to do with it today. Okay, no, no, what I'm saying, no, what I'm saying is that so uh -oh. far this year in Washington, D.C., uh, 70 blacks have been killed. 8,000, right. wait, 8,000 will be I murdered think, this year more right. than, than the entire Vietnam. Right. Now, what I want to know, is mm. how can that be explained by that is, slavery? That is far different. I don't know. I think right there, uh, the two different variables here don't have nothing to do with each other directly. So I, mean, I don't know how they're gonna. He's gonna. He's gonna end this one. Let's, let's find out. Is how can that be explained by that is, slavery? That is far different. That That's particular cause is far different than saying that we can blame everything on slavery. I don't think anybody, any responsible academic mm -hmm. <clears throat> who uses slavery as a basis can blame everything on it. But I'd be interested to find out what we can blame on slavery. <laughs> All right, you guys. So that was Walter E. Williams. How much can we blame on slavery? And from what I'm getting from what he's saying, he's like, he's like, man, nah, we can't blame. We understand that slavery has an effect on had you know on us today but we can't continue to look back and say well i can't be successful today because of slavery from two three hundred years ago 40 years ago you know what i mean so in that aspect on, on that aspect he's definitely correct um and on, on the other side of that though when uh ronald walter he made a good point like could we always compare you know slavery we had in america to the Holocaust, and there's just like this great, you know, people like the who had it worse, oh, da, 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 da. and you guys shouldn't be crying about that because look what happened to the Holocaust. And, and uh, Ronald Walters made a good point. He said the Holocaust happened over there, <laughs> slavery happened right here, um, all throughout the South, and we still have great grandparents that experienced it. You know what I mean? I know uh, for me, my great grandma which is only a couple of generations away, was in Mississippi. You know, she's telling me the story when I was a little kid. Uh, she used to pick cotton. They used to have a little shack. The same way you see it in the movie, a little shack. And it'd be like, a whole, you know, eight, seven brothers and sisters. They all worked the fields. You know what I mean? And um, hearing, I remember those stories, man. And uh, it's just, it's just interesting, man, you guys. So, uh, but my take on this is the same way um, I, I, I would agree with Walter Williams on this one, that, you know, slavery is in the past. Now we can't continue to use slavery as an excuse of why we can't move forward. Yes, we acknowledge it. Yes, we know it, it was there. It happened. But, 
you know, we are in 2023 now, and this cannot be the reason why anybody should be held back from achieving their dreams and achieving their goals and uh, stop hanging on to the past and using that as a crutch of why you can't be successful today, man. Those days are over with, dog. We got we to gotta move forward from that. So, crazy video. Um, and uh, a lot of information there. Shout out to the subscriber who requested uh, some, the Walter E. Williams. And until next time, you guys, you guys be easy out there. Peace. If I should die at a young age, thank the Lord for giving me a break. If I should die at a young age, thank the Lord for giving me a break. Because I'll probably live forever, ever, probably live forever, ever, probably live forever, ever, I'll probably live forever.